Welcome to Connie's Truffle House. It's so wonderful to have you back in the Truffle Kitchen. I'm so excited to introduce you to today's very special guest. Our son, Billy, is here to show how to make a French baguette. I've never done this before. He's the expert. He's going to drive this train. Welcome, Billy. Well, thank you. I don't know about expert, but um, <laughs> I like making bread. Show us what the first step is. This is all new to me. Making bread is really easy. It's four ingredients. It's water, flour, salt, and yeast. And that's it. Whether it's um, French baguette or all the different shapes of French bread, it's, those are just the four basic ingredients of all the bread. Okay. So it's really straightforward. Um, you can mix the dough by hand. You can use a uh, like a stand mixer with with a dough hoop like this. Mm -hmm. um, for the sake of time, we'll just we'll just mix it with a uh, with a stand mixer. When you put the uh, put the what do you call this? The, the mixing bowl. When you put this on the scale, you can zero out the scale and then just start adding ingredients. Mm. So, a, a regular, I, I think a regular amount of dough for a, a loaf, whether it's a baguette or, or a batard, is um, about 500 grams, maybe 550. Mm -hmm. And so, you kind of have to work backwards and you can find some different calculators and things online to help you do this. But what we came up with today is um, 325 grams of flour. We'll do 68% hydration, uh, which means we'll have about 220 grams of water, mm -hmm. then 2% salt, which is 6 grams, and a little bit of yeast. Um, you basically just add all this. I think everyone sometimes gets intimidated by yeast. Mm -hmm. You know, um, everything has to be just right for it. It's really pretty straightforward. It's Think of yeast like a tropical plant. Um, it likes warm, wet environments. So when you add yeast to water, add it to you know lukewarm water, like the water you wash your hands with. Okay. You'll see a bunch of temperatures online. It's just, you know, when you're starting out, just use some lukewarm water. It's going to be fine. Straight from the tap. Straight from the tap. Mm. Absolutely. Um, so for our recipe, I always add the water first. Mm -hmm. Add the yeast to the water. Um, so we'll fill this up. Put a little overboard there. So we'll just bring it back up. Uh, there we go. Oh, I see. Yep. Okay, so, so you're just watching the numbers yeah. on the scale. So 220 grams of water. Okay, got it. That's it. Um, and then we add the, the yeast. Um, to that, and I just kind of just swirl it around a little bit, okay. to mix it. It doesn't really matter. The, the one, the one important note is um, don't add the salt right now because um, that high concentration of salt with the yeast. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you leave it there for a little while, it'll it can cause the yeast some of it to die, and you won't get as much of a rise as you want. Oh. Um, that's really about the only rule. Okay. Otherwise, we just start adding the flour. Okay. Um, so you're watching the scale number go up to... We're going to watch it go up to 325. To 325. And I, I measure this out ahead of time. Okay. So, so we know so it's we know. pretty much right, right on. And then here's the and salt. Now the salt. Put that in. Okay. And then we're just going to put this whole thing on the mixer. With the dough hook. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. How long does that take, Billy? Um, I don't know. Five minutes. Oh, okay. Maybe not even that. Just until it becomes, you know, like a... Just a ball of dough. Okay. And what kind of flour? So, you need to use bread flour. And the difference between bread flour and all-purpose flour is mm -hmm. the gluten content. Okay. So this isn't um, this isn't gluten-free. This is, in fact this this is gluten extra. <laughs> um, gluten is you know it's what gives the dough that stretchy right. property. And right. So um, unfortunately, breads like you know French baguette bread and bread that has a lot of air inside mm -hmm. of it, um, mm -hmm. you have to gluten for that. Right. So, right. I won't be tasting this, friends, but you can taste it. Right okay. Now. I'll do it. And I usually just put it on a floured mm -hmm. work surface, mm -hmm. and um, we'll knead it a little bit. Mm -hmm. That'll kind of help the the gluten develop mm -hmm. into long strands. There's our, you know, 500 and about 50 grams of dough. Okay. So all we do now is we put it into a, you know, a grease 
bowl. Okay. Just put a little bit of olive oil, smear around, okay. drop that in there, we'll uh -huh. cover it, we'll come back in an hour and see how it looks. Wow. That's it. That's fantastic, Billy. It'll rise up. So the dough has risen for a second time. Yeah. That's right. So okay. after we punched it down, it's risen right. again, and we're going to degas it again. And now is the time um, when we'll, we'll shape it. I think that the easiest shape to start with is just a round or a bowl. It's just this ball of bread, and we'll let it rise for the final time mm -hmm. in um, in like a bowl. And so just put your bread out, degas it, and then I just fold that part in, turn it, fold this part in. You kind of Here's some air pockets. Yeah. We'll fold this part in. Fold this part in. And then turn it over. And all we're going to do now is, it's kind of hard to describe this, but you're going to take the bread and sort of pull it towards you. And you want it to stick a little bit on the work surface. Mm -hmm. And that's going to tighten the top. Oh. And, and, and why is that important? Um, just having a nice um, tight dough on top, it'll rise and you won't have any tears or wrinkles or cracks. Okay. It'll have this okay. nice. Um, beautiful. If you're hearing noise in the background, friends, that's the oven preheating to 500. It's a little louder than it usually is in the truffle kitchen. So this is another loaf uh, that just finished its second rise. So just like like any loaf um, that you're going to shape, you know, after that second rise, the first step is just degas it. Right. You get all the gas out, and that's enough. For a batar, which is that football-shaped loaf, um, kind of pull it like this. And this is something I think you have to watch a video for several times. Um, but I pull it kind of into a long shape. Pull it about halfway down. These are kind of the ears. One ear comes in here. Other ear comes down here. This bottom part comes up like this. And then we have it like that. And we're gonna, we're gonna roll it out a little bit. There are lots of great online resources for bread baking. Uh, I think one of the best is the King Arthur website. Uh, the King Arthur head baker, his name is Jeffrey Hamilton. And his, uh, his book, on bread is excellent. I highly recommend it. Oh, and they have a bunch of really good videos on um, on how to shape different loaves. So you can see sort of the beginnings right. a little bit hard. Right. And if you just real gently start in the center yeah. and push outward, you can still see the seam there. Right. So that's going to be the underside. Mm -hmm. And we want it to be a little bit longer. So again, real lightly. Just nestled in the yep. middle. And so we'll give this again about 45 minutes to rise. And anytime the dough is sitting out, we want it to be covered because the air will dry it out okay. and it'll have this kind of funky crust on it. So, Billy, the bread's been rising about 45 minutes, yep. right? So, what's next? Um, now it's time to get it in the oven. So, here it's in the basket, it's been rising about 45 minutes. I always use a little piece of parchment paper. It's just easier to slide the dough around on. Okay. Um, so I'll put that here on top. Okay. A big uh, peel, pizza Why peel. How do you use that? It's just easier to move, it, oh, move okay. the bread in okay. and out of the oven. Um, put that here on top oh. and just flip it over. Oh. And we take that off. We'll take this off. Oh. So there's a there's our our boule that's risen. That's beautiful, Billy. And now we're going to make um, a couple of cuts. And these are relief cuts so that as it expands in the hot oven, um, it doesn't tear okay. the top of the dough, but it has okay. um, room to expand. And I mean, you can make cuts any way you want. Some okay. people make a box, some people make like a checkerboard. I just like doing sort of three, oh, or four oh my goodness. cuts like that. that. That's beautiful. That's all you need. You, you know, before we pop that in the oven, I kind of have a feeling the friends out there are wondering why I'm wearing an apron that says Billy. Why are you wearing an apron? <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. Well, you may recall the day that you and Nash were moving out of a house into another one and you asked me, Mama, could you take this box to Goodwill? And I said, oh, of course, Billy. 
And, out, and he put the box in the back of my car, and the apron was hanging out of his side. This was his Christmas present about two years ago. That was like the tent apron I got for Christmas. But it was special with your name on it. So I grabbed it out. He apologized and said it was an accident. And now I wear it just to kind of make your chain. So I bought you a matching one, but I decided oh, to wear the Billy Bill. Thank goodness. I'm so glad. <laughs> Let's go put this in the oven. Come on. Oh. All right. Here we go. Keep oh, over here hey, here's the. Ooh, yeah. Oh, check this out. So, and so here. we're just going to. And it sits on right the there. parchment paper yep. in the oven on the pizza stone. Okay, that's great. It's and at 500. Set the timer. About how long, Billy? About 20, 25 minutes. 25 Start minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And again, the parchment, I think it's just it's just easier to move the, the dough around with. And then um, a lot of different ways you can cut this. The same thing, you just want to have give it some room um, to expand. Um, oh, wow, really? Kind of like, oh, know, wow. Um, How'd you learn all this? I'm just trying it. The parchment paper makes it a lot easier to slide uh, the dough off of the, the peel. The reason we use a pizza stone is it, it keeps the bottom of the, the dough dry. It gives that nice crust on the bottom. So usually after two or three minutes, I'll open the oven door and just pull that parchment paper out. So... Really, it looks done. It is. That oh, that's pretty you. good. That is amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. It smells so good. Put it over here. That is nice. You can measure the temperature. It gets above 200. 210, you're good. And it, um, wow, it's beautiful. It got a little big there. I probably cut it uh, too deep, but. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I think it'll be good. That's all there is. I think we need to taste it. All right. Let's bring in some people that can eat gluten. You'll recognize this. Handsome gentleman who is my husband Bill, also known as Poppy. Hello, gluten taster. I'm a gluten man. And Ashley, Billy's Hello, wife. She can eat gluten. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at it. Can y'all see the steam coming out of this? This is the only time I haven't tasted something in the trouble you know, huh? kitchen. I know. But, <laughs> mm. what do you think? So good. Oh, wow. Well, good. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I wish y'all were here. If you were here, mm -hmm. everybody would have a slice of gluten homemade bread by Billy. I can't thank you enough for being here. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Bill. Poppy. Kristen, thank sister. you behind the camera. It's been so much fun. We can't wait to see you next time. Love y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.